This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the new top of the line 2018 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM, i9 processor, and the newly equipped Vega 20 graphics that was just updated. I'm gonna compare it to the previous 2018s, the base model, and also the top of the line model with 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you missed my previous video, the i9 model isn't worth it at all, even though this one is equipped with the i9. And to throw into the mix, I have my 2016 MacBook Pro with a 460 graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, and I believe it's a 2.9 gigahertz CPU, the best one available yet to custom order it. And this laptop practically performs the same as a 2017 with a 560. The technology is basically the same. So if you have a 2016 model or a 2017 model, this is going to represent it. This has been my workhorse ever since it came out. A good laptop, but it definitely has some limitations nowadays with some codecs, which we'll talk about. And I'm also working on a video with Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Make sure you guys are subscribed and have those notifications enabled. Now, I also want to mention that I'm not really going to cover thermals or benchmarks. Typically, in the beginning of these videos, I look at a variety of benchmarks. I actually did that in a separate video where I took a deeper kind of look at that. Uh, some of the benchmarks didn't really change that much, and some were really surprising. So after this video is over, you guys can go and check it out. There'll be a link in the video description. So let's start out with Bruce X. And as you can see, there's really not that much of an improvement compared to the previous 2018 MacBook Pro graphics cards. But generally, I don't think Bruce X is that great of a test anymore because other results that I saw in my testing really don't match up to this. So I wouldn't be basing a lot off of Bruce X anymore. Now let's jump into something where I did see some bigger difference and that's stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. As you can see, the original 2018 MacBook Pros are almost the same, a little bit faster than my 2016 version, but not a whole lot of difference. And the new Vega 20 graphics card is actually twice as fast as my MacBook Pro. Now that really shows off the extra performance of the Vega 20 graphics chip. So if you're doing something like stabilization or doing other effects that are mainly rendered by your graphics, that is where you're going to see some good difference. Now let's jump into a five minute 4K project. There's two LUTs and film grain applied. And as you can see, yes, the Vega 20 graphics card is faster, but it's not a huge difference compared to the 560X. Now we're not seeing a big difference because Final Cut Pro is so optimized already. Uh, the actual components of the Vega 20 graphics card wasn't taxed as much as the others. If your computer is already editing 4K footage just fine, don't feel like you're missing out because there's this new Vega 20 option that you have to spend an extra $350 to get. Now let's take it up a notch and take a look at H.265 footage, otherwise known as HEVC. This is where things get a little bit interesting. And this is with color corrections. And as you see, the Vega 20 really isn't that much faster than the previous 2018 graphics cards. But when we compare it to our 2016 model, which performs about the same as a 2017 model with the best graphics card, there is a massive difference. Now that's because the new HN Intel CPUs are so much faster at decoding uh, H.265 footage. So both the processor has a dedicated chip and there's also the new T2 chip inside of here, which is also supposed to decode uh, the H.265 footage. Now I had a very hard time figuring out which one is it using? Is it using the T2? Is it using the Intel decoding, uh, what that T2 chip is actually capable of. I did a ton of research, but I couldn't find out what is being used. Now, where we see an even bigger difference is if you're working with 10-bit footage. If you have an older machine, a 2016 or a 2017 machine, it is extremely difficult. I'm getting about one frame per second instead of 60. Literally, it just falls apart. My computer is crashing. I have to convert everything to ProRes. Now moving to this machine, uh, the CPU is barely used. I'm talking about 5% CPU usage. Our graphics card is handling everything and it's perfectly smooth, 60 frames per second with LUTs, with color correction. It cuts through it like butter. Now the unfortunate part is even with the Intel CPU and the new AMD graphics and the T2 chip, we still don't have 10-bit HEVC hardware encoding. Now what this means is that you'll have no problem editing this 10-bit 4K60 footage, but when it comes time to export, if you want to upload a 10-bit HDR file online so you can have HDR video, it is going to take forever to render. For example, exporting it to 8-bit, 
took just six minutes and 54 seconds, but to 10 bit to do HDR took three hours and 50 minutes for a five minute clip. That is crazy. And we still have a very hard time for anybody that wants to be uploading 4K HDR footage. I do wanna point out that I wasn't even able to test this out on my MacBook Pro. I spent hours and hours trying to get it to work. Compressor just kept crashing. I reinstalled Final Cut and Compressor. I actually tested it both on High Sierra and Mojave and it would not handle that footage. Now, one thing that I was able to test is to just render the timeline. Here, the new Vega 20 model was almost three times as fast. It was interesting because the CPU and graphics cards were almost maxed out. It was flying through this where the previous one was just not very efficient and taking much, much longer. So if you're gonna be transcoding the 10-bit HEVC footage, this is one area where the new MacBook Pros are way better and the Vega 20 graphics will come in handy. Next, we're gonna take a look at ProRes RAW, Cinema RAW Lite from the Canon C200 and Red RAW. But before that, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. I've built five websites using Squarespace and have been recommending them for over four years now. So when they reached out and wanted to sponsor the channel, it was a no-brainer. Whether you're wanting to build a portfolio site, e-commerce, blog, or anything else, they've got you covered. They have an easy-to-use website builder and great templates with automatic versions for mobile devices. Follow the link in the description to start your free trial with no credit card required, and then you can get 10% off your first purchase. Guys, seriously, if you're looking for a website, go check out Squarespace. They have been sponsoring this channel for a while and making videos like this possible. So now let's take a look at the raw codecs where things get a little bit interesting depending on which codec you're editing with. We're gonna start out with ProRes RAW. Exporting our project, we really don't see that great of an improvement over the 560X. All these machines don't have really an issue editing this ProRes RAW footage. It's very, very efficient and final cut. And that makes sense because we have this efficient codec and we're exporting to something that's very easy to encode using quick sync so the difference isn't very big now if you are exporting to say ProRes that's where the difference starts to come in and then if we compare it to my 2016 model our performance is almost doubled and that's because of not only the Vega 20 graphics cards but of course having a much more powerful CPU as well now let's take a look at Canon Cinema Raw Light which is not light at all puts a huge toll on your computer and this is one area where the Vega 20 graphics card really stands out and really improves your performance. Now, that might be a good thing for you if you really need the extra performance while being portable, or it might not be a good thing if you don't want to spend the extra money on Vega 20. Uh, but let's take a look at some of these results. Exporting our color graded 4K60 project, the Vega 20 was about 35% faster than the 560X and about 55 to 60% faster than my 2016 MacBook Pro. Now a 35 to 55% improvement is a big deal, but what matters even more is that with the previous MacBook Pros, you could not edit this footage. Playing back the footage in my timeline, my super expensive, completely maxed out 2016 version and the base model 2018 version only played back at 16 frames per second. So you can't even play that back without stuttering and having issues. Now, the previous i9 model, very expensive that some of you guys bought, would only play back at 20 frames per second. So not a big improvement. This new MacBook Pro with the Vega 20 graphics played back at just over 30 frames per second, sometimes 30, sometimes 32 and that's with a LUT and color correction applied. That actually competes with the previous model and that Blackmagic eGPU kit, which is $700 attached. And if you didn't check out the video, I'll have a card above here, but that was the only reason that I would recommend that external graphics card unit. Now, this MacBook Pro with the Vega 20 edits it just as well as that $700 external graphics card unit that you can't really lug around with you. So for those that edit this footage, I would really recommend a Vega 20 equipped 2018 MacBook Pro. And now for color graded 4.5K red raw footage, as you can see, we have a small improvement with the Vega 20 graphics card, uh, but the difference isn't very big. We do have a bigger improvement over my 2016 model, but that is because the biggest limitation with this footage is not the graphics card, so the Vega 20 can't really help that much. It's more of the CPU. Our four core 2016 model is quite a bit slower, but all the six cores are very similar. And if you're trying to play back this footage in the timeline or export 
the CPU just goes to 100% and that's our biggest limitation. So now let's do a roundup and answer the biggest question, is Vega 20 worth it? Well, if you're upgrading from a 2016 or a 2017 model and you really push your machine, you do heavy video editing, if that's how you make a living, then definitely if you can afford it, go for the Vega 20 option. If you're somebody that just does light 4K editing, a little bit of color correction, maybe a few titles, go for the base model. It's not that much lower than even this Vega 20 equipped model. If you're editing standard H.264 or H.265 footage, um, I think you're gonna be plenty happy. Now, if you already have a 2018 MacBook Pro, say you bought a higher end spec model, unless you edit with Canon Cinema Raw Light footage, which you should absolutely upgrade, or unless you push your machine to the limits, which then it might be worth upgrading, or unless you play video games on your Mac Pro in the spare time, it really isn't worth getting the Vega 20 graphics card. Yes, you have a little bit lower thermals, and yes, it does perform a little bit better, but is it worth spending extra money and selling and losing money on your MacBook Pro? I really don't think it is. Those machines already perform quite well, uh, but if you edit Canon Cinema Raw Lite, absolutely take the hit. It sucks that Apple didn't warn us ahead of time that they're gonna be putting out these graphics cards. That is a big shame, but I really think that the extra performance is worth it. And like I just gave you guys a little sneak peek, uh, if you game on your machine on your off time, there is some massive improvements. Go check out my gaming uh, video with the Vega 20 graphics card. I'll leave a link in the video description as well. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you guys wanna see more, including my Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve results, make sure you guys enable those notifications. If you guys have any questions, ask in the comment section below. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.